don't let something that presents itself um, deter you if there's some element of it that's just not quite perfect, either it's not exactly what you were thinking you were going to do with your DVM degree, or it's not in the place you thought you would want to live forever, or it's not working on the kinds of animals or the health problem that most interests you because you never know where those experiences will lead you. They won't all pan out, they, um, but when you go back and look at the things that you learned and the people you met, you, you know, you will have no regrets about those kinds of experiences. And I, um, I almost stepped away from veterinary school midway through um, my four years here um, in order to spend just a few months in Antarctica working on seabirds. And for me, you know, it was a big decision to leave my whole cohort of fellow vet students and go away and um, be, you know, on the other side of the planet for a few months and then and have that experience, which I just wanted very badly, and then come back and join another class and be delayed in finishing my DVM degree. But somewhere in the back of my mind, I thought, you know, I know that this will be, this is the right decision. It's if, if, if only because it will be so incredibly um, interesting and exciting to be there for three months. I mean, if that was all I got out of it, that would be fine. And I was, but then I, I talked to the school and said, you know, listen, if I can do this, I'm going to try to get some data that I can then go and apply to a master's degree at some point in the future, blah, 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 the wonder of this wonderful school is like, sure, you can do it, we understand this is a unique opportunity, and go for it. And I think they would have that response because they could see that I wanted to explore. This avenue is a little bit weird, but they were willing to support that. So I guess, you know, for me, the biggest advice to you would be don't get worried about trying to figure everything out now about every step of your career in the next eight or ten years. Be open to different routes that that could take um, and seize opportunities. Um, people that I've met along the way have been absolutely instrumental um, to, to getting me where I am now. It's really been about the people I've worked with. Um, so, um, I, I think you can tell that most of us did not have a straight line and everybody had huge zigzags in their roads and I think that's just sort of the way it is. And, uh, but, and I, I, do, I wouldn't change a single zigzag because along the way I gained skills that contributed to the next turn. Knowing what I know now about how I best learn things, I think that um, while I was in vet school, I would have tried to have gone to some of the primary literature on certain subjects that interested me most, although obviously you don't have time to do that for every single subject in vet school, but I think I would have retained things better if I'd been thinking along those routes and reading a paper, and then I would have remembered that story and it would have helped me um, kind of integrate everything else around that. I think it's sort of just knowing yourself and your interests a little bit. I mean, some people are, are really clinically gifted, and um, I was not one of those. <laughs> and so, like, you know, the surgery would come, the spade would be on the table, and my heart is racing, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got to cut this animal. And it, so I knew that that wasn't my internal strength. And I always came, I mean, I did it, and I sweated it out, and I a slow, thorough, uh, scared to death surgeon every time I did it, <laughs> but um, but so I so for me I knew that um, it was a basic skill set that I had to get, and if I would have changed one thing, I, I probably would have practiced a little longer to be more confident. Um, because today I still I have to put a transmitter or an implant an animal, and my heart goes, and I gotta cut that animal, and I get that that sensation again, and and that will probably never change throughout my career. Um, and, and it's because I don't quite have the foundation, the clinical foundation that um, if I would have changed a few things, I, I might have slowed down and gotten. I don't necessarily regret that um, as a decision, but my research interests were strong and I always came into vet school with sort of a, a bigger idea that I wanted to do free ranging wildlife um, population work. And so um, there are just only so many hours in the day and at some time, at a point, you kind of have to triage where your strengths are and, um, and uh, you know, don't necessarily pursue something because somebody's told you, well, you should have these 17 things. Um, you know, really think through what your interests are. If you're considering the PhD route, that you truly love what you're getting the PhD in because if you do specialize. It'd be just the same way as if you're deciding to do a residency and if you're going to go into equine surgery, for example, which was my other obvious course, I thought, wow, I will be doing surgery on horses pretty much every day for the rest of my life. Is that what I want? And so I think if you if you do get a PhD, you will be branded with a certain skill set. And like Kirsten, I try to sur surround myself with people who don't have a PhD because I need I need their perspective and their and their skill set, which has to be different from mine because I have a very specialized skill set. So I think um, if you're thinking of a research degree, love research. Don't, 
don't do it necessarily to get you the stream job that you are anticipating will want that because um, that's often not how things work out. So for each thing that hopefully you're in vet school and you're you're, le you're loving vet school because because that is um, that speaks well and bodes well for what you'll like for the rest of your life. So. And I think the reason why your heart rate is high is because you're always doing surgery on endangered species. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, like, have you out there? <laughs> um, but it's probably true for any of us.